good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's In Conversation. I'm Lakin Giles, a performing arts senior from Ormond Beach, Florida. Last month, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II struck Emmy Gold for his captivating dual performances as Carl Abar and Dr. Manhattan in HBO's powerful adaptation of Watchmen. His historic at-home acceptance speech quickly went viral for its inspiring humility and honesty. Since his screen debut in 2016, Abdul-Mateen has solidified himself as an acting powerhouse through films ranging from Aquaman, Us, The Trial of Chicago 7, to the highly anticipated Candyman, and the long-awaited The Matrix 4. Before committing himself fully to acting, Abdul-Mateen studied architecture, a discipline of balance, precision, dimension, and art to create structural brilliance. His performances reveal the same cornerstones, characters cemented in humanity with acres of passion and magic swirling within. Let's take a look. I, Bobby G. Seale, have a motion pro se to defend myself. I'd like to invoke the precedent of Adams versus U.S. X. Rel. McCann, where the Supreme Court overruled. I am being denied right Mr. now Seale. my constitutional Will you be quiet? right for Will legal you? representation. Will you be quiet? take one of these if i knew how to use that i wouldn't need to be making speeches ladies and gentlemen distinguished performance award honoree yaya abdul mateen the second congratulations thank you thank you so much i appreciate it um thank you to the savannah college of arts and design thank you to the students thank you to president paula wallace um for this distinguished award it's such an honor um for me, when I took this role, it was a chance to advocate for Bobby Seal. You know, Bobby Seal was a man who advocated for people like myself, uh, for uh, Black people, for people from uh, underprivileged communities, uh, people who grew up in poverty, uh, people who were against war, uh, people who were uh, historically downtrodden by our government. Um, and he went through so much and he sacrificed a lot to put himself on the line for our cause. And it's always a great honor when I can use my own artistry to in return advocate for him, to advocate for his story. So um, I'm just so, so grateful that I could lend my own artistry to a, to a good cause. Um, and thank you, thank you so much uh, for, this, for this award, I appreciate you. Hi, and welcome to the SCAD Savannah Film Festival. I'm Entertainment Weekly's Chancellor Agard, and I am so, so happy to be here with Emmy Award-winning actor, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II for a, a lively chat about his really, really successful career over the past five years. Um, how are you doing, Yaya? I'm chilling, man. I'm doing well. Uh, it's glad to be here. I'm, I mean, pardon. It's good to be here. Uh, I'm excited, man. I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, I want to start because I think you've had such, because I think you graduated Yale, what, five years ago? And yeah, such, man. That was a, uh, June, June 2015. And in such a, in the past five years, you've You've just bursted. Uh, your 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 career has just blown up in such an amazing way. I mean, how do you feel when you look back at sort of all you've managed to accomplish in a relatively short amount of time? Like to be honest, I I saw the real, um, and it's shocking, man. It's 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 really shocking in this moment because I have I've been on the move and I've been able to, you know, to uh, to stay around the tastemakers to really feed my appetite. You know, I'm, I'm doing the thing that I left school to do, uh, and I haven't really gotten gotten a chance to catch up and, and, and to reflect. Uh, but when I do, I'm always uh, shocked and then I'm grateful. You know, I'm really, really grateful for, uh, for uh, you know, the things that I've been able to experience in, in, such, a, in such a short amount of time. And as the student, intro, um, the student introductor uh, mentioned, like you wanted to become an architect and then yeah. made your way into acting. And I feel like, I feel like uh, for you, I mean, how much of your career since making, since, since moving over to acting sort of has been having a plan and then or being adaptable to changing circumstances what's that balance you know, that's, like? that's a, that's an excellent question you know for me i've always sort of had i've had a plan and uh, at some point my plan was to try acting and to give it my all and then giving it my all got me into graduate school and i needed to make another plan and then once i was in school my plan was to um 
was to accumulate as much experience and tools as I could to really challenge myself to become an actor. I didn't come, I didn't go to graduate school uh, considering myself an actor. I went to graduate school considering myself someone who wanted to be an actor. And I had to learn to change my vocabulary. It took about a whole year to change my vocabulary to call myself an actor. Um, and then my plan was to get better. Once I graduated again, I had to make another plan because my skills had gotten me into a certain place. And so then my plan was to be able to have artistic freedom, which meant that I would um, which meant that I wanted to to uh, become financially stable through my art. And I wanted to even more importantly, um, be able to move across projects and genres in a way that it, that uh, fulfilled whatever appetite I tended to have at the time. Um, so my plan really has always started from looking at myself and seeing what seeing seeing what I desired. Never really aiming for a specific end result, but just more so aiming for a quality or aiming for a feeling, and then fighting, working really hard, vehemently. I think to um, to give myself that feeling, you know, and that's something that's been my formula, you know, up until this point. I think right now I'm in a place where I'm beginning to take more ownership of the place that I'm in. And, you know, beginning to say, okay, well, now, now that you uh, are at this current juncture, what do you want to do? What do you want to, you know, what do you want to do with it? How do you want to grow? And how do you want to uh, begin to inspire? So that's 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 currently, you know, the way that I'm playing it right now. Mm -hmm. And speaking of inspiration, I think uh, your performance in the Trial of Chicago Seven is really in inspirational because, as Bobby, as co as Black Panther co-founder Bobby Seal, you're you suffer through so many injustices in this movie and you have to just sit there in court. Um, but before we get to those courtroom scenes, uh, you, uh, your first scene in the movie is sort of totally different from everything else you've gone to experience. And yeah. we actually, yeah, yeah. we actually have a clip of that. So can we roll the clip, please? You can give this speech you in Chicago. Fred Hampton wants me to Let Fred give the speech. 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 Let Fred give
No, I I never even noticed that. If I'm if I'm being perfectly honest, I never noticed that. Um, and I think, but I, I think a lot of what that has to do, at least with it, with it visibly appearing that way, was the place where I sat on, you know, the place where I sat inside of the courtrooms was literally on the other side of uh, of the rest of the quote unquote co defendants who would mm-hmm. be, you know, the cast. So I, I came to set. I sat in my chair, which was on the end, and everyone else sat sat along, you know, along the row. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just kind of how the setup was. But I just want to just be clear that there was no effort to isolate or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And I actually had a really good time on set, um, you know, really good time on set. And uh, and uh, so, yeah, so, no, I, I think if, if if anything, it was really just a, maybe a reflection of the focus, you know, making sure that I that, that I could capture those moments in between. Um, because at the same time, I am advocating for a character who is um, in prison you know, who is in prison and who doesn't have the freedom to come and, you know, to come and go. So at some point in my preparation, I had to make sure that I put on that mentality to make sure that when he, when he says action, that I'm ready to, uh, you know, I'm ready to be in whatever headspace that was. But no, that wasn't really, a, it wasn't really a conscious, it wasn't a conscious decision at all. Mm-hmm. And I mean, one of the scenes of this movie, uh, Bob, it, Bob, and recreates a real life thing that happened, Bobby gets bound and gagged in court, uh, yeah. which is, uh, just a harrowing thing to watch at any period of time, but especially in the climate in which we are now. Uh, for you, what was it like sort of shooting that sequence emotionally? Yeah, that was a difficult scene to shoot. Mm-hmm. Very difficult scene to shoot. And I never really even thought about what it would be like. Uh, I just remember that, you know, um, it was my job to sit down and to be bound and to have the, the you know, to go through that, you know, um, but I also hearken to back to, you know, there's a there's, there's a line that Bobby that Bobby Seale says in one of his interviews. He says, you know, when you're a revolutionary, they can't break your spirit. And um, and I knew that I was doing it in order to advocate, in order to tell Bobby's story. You know, in my performance, it all goes back to me to, uh, you know, understanding that this is that this was somebody else's real experience. So I wanted to make sure that I honored that experience, you know, and. You know, that means that I had to put myself in that position and, you know, uh, allow my own self to go through that. But knowing that it was nothing like what Bobby actually what, what Bobby actually, you know, went through. You know, he was he was silenced in a way that I was not ever silenced. I could put my hand up and I could wave and I could say, hey, I need out. Um, Bobby couldn't do that. There were no hand signals. His hands were actually, you know, shackled. His mouth was actually tied. And so um, it was it was it was difficult. But it, but I also had a responsibility, and I couldn't let that moment break my spirit, or I couldn't let that moment be be larger than my own self because Bobby was victorious in that moment. You know, uh, he he was not uh, victimized. Uh, you know, he wasn't victimized. He wasn't demoralized. It might have been a humiliating experience, but Bobby was uh, Bobby was defiant in those moments. And so, you know, th- at some point as an actor, I had to put on put on that put on that same pride. You know, that 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 he had as well to say hey you can you can you know cover my mouth you can put me in chains but you can't lock me down nor nor silence me you know and there was something very powerful about forcing myself as the actor about about causing myself as the actor to force everybody in that scene to witness what the united states you know uh, uh, uh justice system had just had just done to me you know how how i and my rights had been violated um and when you when, when the work is that important when it's um when it's rooted in uh something real then it's fun you know it's fun because you get to you, you know it's it's difficult but it's also uh cathartic and it's also a pleasurable experience because you know why you're in those why you're in that position so i just you know i kind of um put myself in in those shoes and try to make sure that you know that i was an advocate knowing that it was bigger than me mm-hmm. And as you mentioned, so you just graduated five years ago. I mean, uh, but I'm curious, uh, did anything at Yale sort of prepare you for what you have to go through right now? This all which is, I mean, you're, you're in Berlin right now shooting The Matrix 4 amid a pandemic. I mean, what has it like been shoot? What has it been to, what, 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 what is it like to shoot a movie like The Matrix 4 in a pandemic oh, and dealing with all those protocols? Oh, well, I'm going to just say no, flat out no. There's nothing <laughs> at Yale that prepared me to be in a pandemic. I mean, we were isolated. We felt like we were isolated from New York because, we, you know, there were schools, you know, seven days a week. But and so there was nowhere to go. But it's, that's that's just about it. There's there's nothing that can compare. Um, 
but Berlin is it's been it's it's been good to be here. You know, Berlin, um, beautiful, beautiful country. They a country that appreciates the arts, appreciates music and art, art culture, theater um, as well. And uh, you know, we're making something really cool here on here here on Matrix Four that I think a lot of people will be excited about. Um, but we're doing it in, in the same way that everyone else in the world hopefully is. You know, we're trying to be safe and respectful, and you know, um, really use our artistry our, our, our artistry right now is actually um is actually community building you know it's just sort of the thing that's keeping us strong and keeping us you know uh together while a lot while a lot of us are are away from home so we get to say hey i'm gonna get up go to work and i'm gonna do my art and build community at the same time and you know that's 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 really the theme of how we're making the matrix but it's also the theme of how myself you know personally i'm uh you know, getting through these 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 pandemic days, these crazy pandemic days. <laughs> and I mean, obviously, we have a lot of students watching this right now. Uh, for you, I mean, what advice would you give them um, about entering this profession as and being an artist at a time like this? Oh man, I think um, I would say trust yourself, trust your gut. And I would say to young artists, trust your instinct. Um, and tell yourself in the mirror every single day that you are enough. Um, stay curious and uh, you know fight for your artist, fight for your artistic integrity. Uh, because at the end of the day, I think that's that that's going to separate you know that's going to separate you from the crowd. You know is is what makes you you. So stick to your guns, um, and that you won't always be appreciated. But in the end, you know if you stick to your guns, I think I think that you will appreciate your you you know you will appreciate your own your own work. The world needs artists. You know, there's a refrain in the in the movie of the Chicago Seven: "The whole world is watching." You know, and uh, art is definitely needed to get out messages uh, that 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 voice what the youth are feeling that voice that voice the direction of the world. You know, art has always been a tool, be, be it be it a uh, 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 painting, uh, writing, acting, filmmaking, photography. You know, there um, is such a strong medium to express the. Um, the rage and the 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 inner feelings of uh of the world uh so um thank you for your art uh advocate for the arts advocate for students um and you know um keep at it you know that would be my advice awesome well it looks like that's all the time we have for tonight's conversation yeah yeah thank you so so much for being here and for taking the I time appreciate to you talk. So much. I appreciate you. And congratulations again on the Emmy and again on this on this award tonight as well. And Thanks. thank you everyone at home for watching and tuning in. Um, and please stick around. Please keep tuning in for more of the Scad Savannah Film Festival. All right. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you to everyone um, and be well. <laughs>